presentation. Okay. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Am I audible? Yes? yes. Great. So thanks for coming to our session. Um, we are from Cloudification, and we'd like to tell you our story of running OpenStack on top of Kubernetes with Argo CD. So uh, as I said, we are from Cloudification, and we do develop and support OpenStack clouds. We do custom deployments and architecture. We also contribute to OpenStack, Kubernetes, and other projects. And we work a lot with Kubernetes and OpenStack and also public cloud providers. And let's quickly see the agenda. Um, we're going to give you the context of the problems we're trying to solve and our approach for specifically OpenStack using GitOps. We're going to explain about our stack and challenges we faced. And we're going to wrap up with a demo of our solution. So to give you a bit more understanding, um, we have a goal of basically de deploying and maintaining lots of OpenStack installations. Those are typically small ones, uh, such as private and edge cloud platforms. We don't have large support team, and we need to perform installations very fast. Uh, moreover, the installations are slightly different because each customer wants to have its own custom patches. We do some custom developments. We do integrations and sometimes develop drivers. And we also need to support unique configurations for each installation and multi-stage deployments uh, to make sure that everything works smoothly. Um, then to give you a bit more context, uh, we'd like to have one-click upgrades and avoid vendor lock and obviously use open source. And as many customers want, we have to yeah, train the customer teams in order for them to support the installation themselves uh, without it. There are also cases uh, that uh, need to pass uh, security certifications, especially like telecoms and banking. They want to see, um, they do traffic inspection. They want to see how the traffic goes, where each services connects. Um, yeah, this is the big context. Um, I'd like to actually do a quick show of hands. How many of you run OpenStack on top of Kubernetes? Could you raise your hand? Well, I see a few. And how many of you operate more than three OpenStack installations? Like maybe you have a one cloud, but you have completely sp split regions. You have independent OpenStack per region. Yeah. Okay, I see a few. Okay. Okay, good. Then we're in the same boat. Uh, but the only thing we we do have a lot of OpenStack clouds we need to manage. And uh, yeah, it gets challenging. So we did an overview of existing solutions. Uh, I mean, everybody here probably knows Scala Ansible and OpenStack Ansible. And they, they are very fine for many use cases and initial installations. But when you have to do, again, many installations and you have to upgrade all of them and keep them up to date and do just day two maintenance, you need to scale maybe your Ceph clusters and add compute nodes and so on and so forth. Um, you, you obviously need to grow a lot by your manpower, which is also pretty hard. Uh, then there is Kyobi. Uh, I think also many of you know and use it. Uh, it's essentially a combination of Kola Ansible together with more tooling and other projects such as Bitroast. It's definitely more operator friendly and yeah, you can, you can operate your OpenStack cloud easily, but again, um, at the end of the day, when you need to manage tens uh, of installations, it's getting hard. And the upgrades are also no easy. So another, another solution is, of course, based on OpenStack Helm. Uh, as you know, you need Kubernetes for that. Uh, that's when your whole OpenStack cloud, all services come with uh, charms and deployed on top of Kubernetes. Again, um, it has its own benefits, but when we have to maintain lots of customer patches or custom images and different versions, it gets uh, also increasingly hard. Um, and then there is Triple O. Uh, it's uh, yeah, uh, OpenStack and OpenStack that unfortunately retired. Um, there are many other projects uh, out there. Uh, we're not gonna like go into each and every of those. 
Um, maybe a bit of spoiler, we actually use OpenStack Helm ourselves, but we're gonna show you how. And yeah, so we decided that we need to look more into industry and how, what kind of DevOps practices might be helpful to solve um, yeah, this kind of scalability issues and maintaining many environments. And yeah, today everybody does containerization uh, because yeah, that gets you like, uh, that solves your dependency hell and gets your infrastructure more stable. Uh, there's also, of course, infrastructure, the code that I think most of you do as well, and it allows you to, to use single point of truth and allows you to have everything reviewable. Uh, you can do four eyes principle and so on. All of this is uh, very helpful, and I think most of the companies today implement it already. And then there is CI/CD. Uh, of course, you want you want everything to be uh, automatically tested. All the all the images while they're built, um, you want to potentially even deploy them uh, automatically to some environments. Um, and moreover, when you have especially large and complex systems such as OpenStack, and you have many of those OpenStack installations, you want to have your monitoring systems automated. So you need to, yeah, see what's happening inside your uh, clusters and systems before the customers uh, come up with a ticket and complains that something doesn't work. Uh, we need to know this first. Then we have to talk a little bit about clusters. In the context of OpenStack, you know, we have, um, we have database cluster, we have RabbitMQ clusters, uh, we have memcached, and so on. And as we do it, we actually split we deploy independent database per each OpenStack service. We deploy independent RabbitMQ for each OpenStack service for scalability. So at the end of the day, you end up with potentially hundreds of such clusters. So you definitely need automation to manage it. Yeah. And then if you look at OpenStack, uh, it's actually a micro-based, uh, microservice-based uh, architecture because you have all of the components like Keystone, Neutron, Nova, they all communicate over the network and you can treat them as such and you can of course containerize them. That's what many people do. And then you end up with tons of containers. Um, in fact, in our installation, we have about 300 pods and about 800 containers. So what you do, yes, you bring in Kubernetes in order to manage that. And it already covers most of the practices we just spoke. Um, it's very handy for automation and doing infrastructure as code. And what we really like about Kubernetes uh, are the operators. Um, I think many uh, of you spoke about it today already. That's basically small, small pieces of software tools which help you manage different applications which you deploy on top of Kubernetes. Uh, in our case, that's things like RabbitMQ operator to provision RabbitMQ clusters and Percona operator to deploy the database for each OpenStack service. And then of course, uh, you configure everything as YAMLs, and this is probably easier than learning another programming language, uh, at least some say so. Um, yeah, and that still doesn't cover everything. That's why we went further and we looked at GitOps. I'm pretty sure most of you are familiar with this uh, concept. Uh, it's when you declare the state of uh, your cluster inside Git repositories, and it applies declarative configuration, which means you define the actual state you want to have, and which also acts as a single source of truth. So you don't, you don't uh, do it the same way like with Ansible, where, for example, you have imperative approach and you would describe all procedures that need to go through in order for your system to reach a certain state. Yeah? And with GitOps approach, the, the state of your cluster is actually static and you see, uh, you see what changes uh, because you will mostly work with uh, Git changes so everything is re reviewable. You would have pull requests and comments and of course that brings you all of the benefits like version control and four eyes principle and certain consistency. And um, yeah, last but not least, uh, it's actually very handy for rollback because if you committed something wrong, it's very easy to roll back. You just revert the change and it gets applied automatically. 
Uh, this is what, in a nutshell, GitOps is about. And as for tooling, we went with Argo CD. So Argo CD is one of the GitOps tools, not the only one, but probably one of the most well-known and used um, in the open source world. It allows you to do, uh, yeah, implement GitOps workflows. It does, um, it's deployed itself on top of Kubernetes. It's Kubernetes native, and it does uh, automatic synchronization. Uh, of course, you can do rollbacks and roll forwards. You can decide when, which environment will get certain changes uh, deployed. You can do complex rollouts. Uh, and Argo itself would actually monitor the health of your payloads, of your workloads, which is OpenStack in our case, uh, and do the healing in case uh, there's some configuration drift. So if there are unexpected changes, Argo will also detect this typically very, very fast, and you would be able to see the diff between what you haven't defined in your Git and what actually happens inside a cluster. And because it's Kubernetes native, of course, it does support uh, everything like Helm and Customize and just plain Kubernetes YAML manifests. So it's very, um, yeah, it's very handy. Again, if somebody, the cool thing about it, that if somebody went and did some changes manually on top of your cluster, uh, the Argo will detect it and try to recover it, try to restore it to the state you have uh, defined inside Git. And this is exactly the declarative approach uh, we took. Um, yeah, and as I mentioned, we use Kubernetes and Argo CD. And this brings us to the next part of the presentation that will be done by Vadim, who will explain more details. Yeah, let's go deeply to our stack and uh, how it actually looks like. Uh, we call it our stack, but actually you can reproduce uh, everything from this uh, this environment, which which I will show you just right now. Uh, I will go deeply exactly how we we are doing it. Uh, actually, we added this slide uh, one hour ago because everyone on this uh, today showing such slides where you can see workers and masters and so on. Uh, the big difference here uh, in our uh, setup and uh, others that we install uh, OpenStack over all of the Kubernetes cluster. And Kubernetes workers, it's also uh, uh, OpenStack compute nodes. This is a big uh, difference, biggest difference. And uh, the same for the Ceph. And the Ceph on the master nodes, it will be... Uh, control plane for that Ceph also, it will be monitors, uh, it will some, uh, there will be some jobs and so on. So the control plane for the open stack itself, it's uh, the same as control plane uh, for the Kubernetes physically. So the same nodes. Uh, we are actually splitting our uh, installation for uh, four layers or better call it stages. Uh, and the bare metal stage, it's uh, when when we need to install uh, operation system to bare metal services. And for doing that, we are using open source uh, solution MAS uh, and PXC boot up, simple solution what we can use. And after that, we are running some uh, post configure uh, playbooks uh, to, to apply basic configuration like IP addresses, uh, SSH keys and so on. Uh, the second layer, orchestration, uh, we call it orchestration. It's a layer which contains Kubernetes, uh, Helm stuff, Argo CD. So everything what will exactly apply your state to your clusters, to your servers. The next one uh, layer, uh, it's also, we called it like data. Uh, on this stage or layer, uh, we're deploying databases, RabbitMQs, everything that uh, contains your customer data, your user data. And uh, to do that, we are using operators. I will explain it a bit later. And the last uh, layer, it's uh, OpenStack itself, itself and uh, monitoring and observability are around it. So, uh, bare metal stage. Uh, currently, we are using Ubuntu, uh, Ubuntu Jemmy, uh, and uh, right now I am uh, describing exactly what you will see in the demo. 
uh, we are running Ubuntu, uh, Jamie, we are using canonical mass, uh, open sourced version without uh, high availability, but it's enough for most of the installations. And by using mass, you're getting uh, automated provisioning, uh, automated, uh, automated discovery for your hardware. So when you uh, put your new server to the rack, MAS will uh, detect this server by ARP request by uh, some new traffic in the VLAN. We'll start booting it up uh, via PXC, detect all hardware inside it, uh, and try to apply your configuration, your prepared configuration to this server. So in the end, uh, from, from start when you put this server into the rack, you will get prepared hardware server uh, for Ubuntu installation. And to run Ubuntu installation, you need just do one click inside mouse. So it's pretty simple and it's open source. Uh, and uh, after the Ubuntu installation, in our case, uh, we will apply uh, post-install configuration. Uh, as I said, it's uh, IP addresses, SSH keys, nothing more. So nothing uh, related to OpenStack or Kubernetes itself. It's just a simple configuration and can be done by any management configuration tool, really, like Puppet, Chef, whatever you want. Uh, so the next stage, uh, it's more complicated, uh, and this is the biggest, big, biggest difference from other installation uh, called today. And uh, this is uh, Kubernetes, where we install Kubernetes and uh, GitOps and everything for GitOps. To install Kubernetes, we are using also uh, open source solution Kubespray. This is the most popular solution right now, how you can uh, maintain your Kubernetes clusters, you can update it and so on. And at the same time, it's, uh, it's really flexible. So you can uh, plug in your Helm charts inside, you can configure everything what you want, exactly as you want. Uh, to use it on uh, production sites, we just uh, change several uh, YAML files and that's it. So it's durable. Uh, on top of Kubernetes, we are using uh, Cilium as a CNI. This is a not a default uh, CNI for most of Kuberne Kubernetes installation right now. But we are choosing it because uh, it, it works on top of eBPF. Uh, it's uh, really fast and it can give you uh, uh, some advantages like monitoring, real-time monitoring of traffic in your cluster. And it's really useful for troubleshooting, for security monitoring, etc. And at the same time, you can configure BGP inside the Cilium. So it means if your customer or you want to install uh, your cluster, your cloud inside fully layer-free network, in the data center, you can configure BGP connection from the underlay network. This is really important because not just OpenStack should connect uh, to the BGP uh, via BGP to the border routers usually. So the Cilium, it, it's a better choice. Uh, we tested before uh, Cube Router and Calico and uh, each time we found something that we cannot use in this configuration. Uh, and uh, right now we are using Cilium uh, latest version 1.16, as far as I remember. So it's uh, yeah from uh, from open source from community. Uh, on top of it, uh, we install Argo CD. As Dimitri already said, this is the main tool, uh, the more uh, with biggest functionality on the market uh, with open source uh, solution for GitOps. Uh, and Argo CD already will apply uh, our state of uh, op uh, OpenStack cluster. And uh, we do it with uh, OpenStack Helm with a little bit changes inside. Uh, our changes uh, related, most of them related to some Argo CD stuff because by default OpenStack Helm uh, does not uh, support Argo CD, let's say, because Argo CD will try to read uh, standard Helm charts uh, fields like annotations for uh, with the word or how to sync uh, Helm chart and it will do it in wrong way because the OpenStack Helm itself uh, should be installed by a bunch of bash scripts not Argo CD. 
uh, but we are using it because it's already prepared, it's already uh, validated by community and it's ready to use. So why we not do it? Uh, the last, uh, not last, the next one uh, stage, it's a data stage. And uh, on this stage, you can see advantages of using Kubernetes itself. Uh, if you compare with uh, OpenStack Ansible, for example, or something like that. Uh, we are using operators in the Kubernetes for every uh, data service in our cluster. So it means uh, for the local storage, for example, we use OpenEBS, it's an open source provider, and this provider can, uh, can allocate, uh, can split physical disk on each node, uh, and prepare volumes to use it for Kubernetes. It can be LVM volumes, it can be just uh, physical disks, or how you configure it. It depends on how you configure it. And we use this local disk for databases and RabbitMQs. Uh, we use it because uh, we want to split our databases and Rabbit uh, from Ceph uh, cluster. When uh, Ceph uh, goes down or something wrong happen with Ceph, it should not affect uh, control plane for your cloud. So that's why we're using another type of storage. And uh, sometimes it can be uh, faster than all other solution because uh, under hood, under EBS, you can install something like uh, SSD and VME disks and it will be pretty fast. Uh, but uh, with using operator, we can uh, run uh, tens or even hundred clusters just by several lines in the YAML file, so it's pretty easy to maintain after that. Uh, for RabbitMQs and Percona ExtraDB, we are using also operators, and as I said, it uh, handles most of the everyday time tasks for you, so you can scale databases just one, uh, changing one number in the YAML file, you can upgrade it easily. Uh, operator will do it for you, will scale down, scale up cluster and so on, will rotate uh, certificates for the databases, for example. Uh, so you should do nothing, actually, uh, in most of the time. Uh, yeah, and the last one, it's a Rook uh, Ceph operator. This is the, uh, I think this is the only one uh, actually working operator for Ceph right now in the Kubernetes platform. And it's pretty good uh, because uh, it also takes from, from you days-to-day -day, uh, tasks, lots of them, like scaling, OSD detections, uh, automated Ceph upgrades, which can be really painful on the big clusters and so on. And it has uh, self-healing as all of them all of these operators. Uh, so if uh, something goes down, one node, uh, one control plane node, it will uh, reschedule pods every uh, on, on top of the cluster and will configure it again. So this is the automation part of our stack. Uh, so the cloud stage. Uh, here, we just uh, faced the OpenStack the first time. So before this was, was not OpenStack, this just was uh, services around this and preparation. Uh, in, our, uh, in our lab, uh, on, for our demo, we are using vanilla OpenStack, but for the customers, we can install uh, any, any OpenStack forks, uh, whatever they want, uh, but usually we uh, we install it like, uh, describe it on a slide. Uh, we are using uh, one RabbitMQ and one database per each service. So it means for Neutron, for example, we will spawn a uh, splitted cluster RabbitMQ and database. For Nova, it will be another clusters. It gives us more flexibility and uh, performance uh, on the large scales, more than 200 nodes. And it gives us uh, ability to change configuration for specific ser for specific service for specific component when we need it. Uh, about the network configuration, uh, we can use uh, whatever 
provides by OpenStack Helm. So right now it's uh, ML2, OVS, OVN, DVR, non-DVR, BGP plugins, and so on. And uh, additionally, additionally, as optional uh, components, we can install Tempest, uh, but we are not using it for uh, production usually because uh, Tempest, as you know, by default using admin credentials and it can be uh, it can be really bad solution for production ready regions because Tempest can clean up uh, some customer resources sometime. Uh, and Jaeger is a really great tool for troubleshooting your request in your running cluster. We can also install it, but in this case, uh, you and you probably need it. Uh, you have to rebuild uh, Docker images, which was prepared by community because. I don't know why they is not containing uh, Jaeger libraries right now. So, yeah, this is where the customizing should be done. And the last stage, uh, also cloud, uh, it's observability and uh, everything around uh, to support and maintain cluster. Uh, again, we use only open source solutions, so we install Prometheus Grafana for observability. Uh, because it has lots of exporters and uh, you can export and get data for any component that you want. Uh, yeah, alerting, integrations, and so on. Uh, Onput search stack for the logging and Hubble dashboard from Cilium to uh, track traffic, traffic and monitoring traffic flows in the cluster. And challenges. Uh, this is what you will face if you want to reproduce this uh, installation. Uh, as I said, first two uh, points, it's about uh, how Argo CD is working with uh, Helm and how OpenStack Helm, uh, how many annotations OpenStack Helm contains right now. And uh, they are not adapted really well for Argo CD. So you have to change this. Uh, deadlocks between uh, job and services when you install OpenStack Helms. Uh, I think you probably need, uh, know it if you try to do it once. Uh, because, for example, Neutron waiting uh, Nova, Nova waiting some Neutron's component at the same time, and they cannot resolve this dependency. Yeah, Argo CD cannot do it as well, so we have to patch some uh, OpenStack Helm here. Uh, old third-party requirements, uh, it's also about OpenStack Helm itself, uh, especially Kubernetes entry point, which controls dependency uh, in the jobs. It's pretty old, and you have to upgrade it. Yeah, it's recommended to upgrade it. And, of course, uh, such complicated installation requires you knowledge in both of worlds, OpenStack and Kubernetes and GitOps and all of this stuff. So what we uh, get in the result, uh, we get uh, full vanilla OpenStack, uh, usually vanilla. Uh, OpenStack source component, uh, open source component only. So it means you can reproduce everything what I'm talking about. Uh, it is easy to maintain and upgrade, uh, especially with uh, small teams, like two or three people. You can support cluster. Uh, declarative configuration in uh, Git, uh, which was also requested, as Dimitri mentioned before, because you you want to see most of the time the real state in your Git, instead of uh, trying to understand the playbooks in OpenStack Ansible, for example, and trying to understand how it will look like in in the server. Uh, we get a really fast cluster installation. For example, our demo. Uh, environment uh, with a six node installing uh, less than three hours from uh, booting them from a PC without operation system to getting working OpenStack cluster. And inside this cluster, uh, more than 800 uh, containers right now. Yeah, and you get flexibility and uh, scalable uh, production ready solution this case. Yeah, let's go to the demo. Uh, I think we have uh, five minutes left. 
not more. Can you see it? Yeah. So this is look how uh, our Argo CD looks like right now. Uh, this is working cluster. Yeah, I can show you Horizon to uh, to prove it. Yeah, so it's pretty small, as you see, just six nodes. But yeah, OpenStack on top of it. There are a bunch of applications in Argo CD. Uh, we all focused on uh, Neutron, for example, because uh, yeah, there are lots of services inside uh, and complicated dependencies inside. So if I uh, show everything, uh, here you can see uh, lots of configurations to uh, for for agents for RabbitMQ and so on. You probably know it if you familiar with uh, OpenStack Helm because it's the same names, uh, agents running in the ports and so on. Uh, so you can see this is the right now ML2 plus OVS installation. Uh, currently, you see uh, OpenStack 2023.2. So it's fresh. OBS, yeah, deploy it everywhere and so on. What I want to show you is uh, how fast you can update uh, this cluster with GitOps approach. Yeah, let me increase it. Yeah, so we uh, for the demo we want to do pretty simple change. We just want to enable uh, debugging logging for Neutron. Uh, if you try to do it once, you know that uh, it depends on how large your scale. If you have six nodes, you need to restart every, serv every service in your cluster regarding uh, Neutron. And you need to do it with the right order. Yeah, not at once. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> yeah, so uh, our change uh, here looks like... Uh, changes in the logging file uh, you here can see base uh, for uh, 64 encryption this is just file encrypted in the 64 uh, this is not our solution this is how OpenStack Helm uh, do it because they instead of uh, putting uh, some credentials to secrets Kubernetes they decide to put whole configuration to secrets I don't know why but yeah <laughs> This is uh, what we cannot control. So here uh, is just a change one uh, one line, and uh, just because here uh, configuration file per service, so you can see the same changes for each agent and so on. Uh, to show it how it looks like, yeah, I just uh, decrypt this data, and there are just only one line change. So to start upgrade, I will merge this. Uh, I will merge this uh, change, and uh, will speed up a bit uh, our upgrade by syn uh, start synchronization in Argo CD. Yeah, and uh, what you will see right now is uh, Argo CD will recheck all of the configuration, will compare the state inside the Git, will compare state inside your cluster, and will understand what what should be updated. Uh, OpenStack Helm provides to us uh, several jobs, as you see here, uh, and they should be running in a specific order. Uh, and uh, right now, cluster will uh will be upgraded as you see uh let me check like this processing as you see here uh, you uh see actually what is processing right now and you will see one by one these jobs right now was uh database initial and this is a job where a database will be created if you install openstack the first time so it also will be for you prepared. Right now, uh, this is a job which uh, syncs running migration databases. After that will be keystone configuration, users, uh, project, and so on. 
if you install again OpenStack at the first time. And after that, Argo CD will restart all of your uh, services running in cluster in correct order, like API, uh, L3 agents, and so on. You do nothing. You just waiting and uh, see. It will take around seven minutes, so I will uh, show you also what we have. Uh, for example, uh, how it looks like Grafana uh, that we have uh, dashboards provided by uh, community itself, and there are lots of stuff you can monitor and check. There are really good. Uh, dashboards inside and most interesting thing in our installation uh, it's uh, humble this is the dashboard provided by uh, cumulus uh, cni and for example if you want to see why neutron try to reach uh, nova or rabbitmq sometimes but cannot do it with some drop traffic uh, alerts or whatever and you cannot handle it you can do it here you can just open OpenStack namespace and see all of your traffic uh, inside the cluster right now. So you can see all forwarded traffic. And if you have some uh, network issues on, uh, on the Kubernetes level, under layered networks, you will see drops here. So it's really easy to debug and check what's going on. And it's really useful for uh, some security certifications and monitoring. So you can uh, install uh, the tool uh, for monitoring these flows. These flows can be extracted uh, by CLI or JSON or whatever you want. And you can monitor them for security reasons. Uh, yeah, let's see. Yeah, right now it's syncing Kubernetes, I think. Yeah, it's a Kubernetes users. Yeah, I can I can leave it as it is, we will see it, and I think we can uh, go to one question. Yeah, yeah, one one question at least because it takes more time than expected. Thank you. Uh, yeah, any question? We'll give you the mic, man. Yeah, as you see, agents. Is your solution um, open source? Uh, yeah, our our solutions. It's. Uh, it's a bunch of open source projects mm -hmm. install it together in one uh, cluster so nothing uh, nothing our solution there we, we did we did nothing we just compare it and uh, run it yes we prepared lots of playbooks and uh, yaml files here in this repository is huge but everyone uh, in this auditory i think can reproduce it okay thank you Uh, just a, a simple question: Is there your uh, your modify your modified version of your Elm chart for Argo CD in your repository? Mm. Is it? Uh, yeah, I think I can. Yeah, give me a minute. Um. Yeah, for example, here, you can see if you, if you open uh, OpenStack Helm for Neutron, you will see here OpenStack Sync uh, Order, blah, 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 something like that. And they will be in the plus, plus order. But for the Argo CD, we have to use uh, another, another type of ordering. We have to use uh, minus 8, minus 7, and so on. So we need to change these fields. And uh, in our preparation, I removed these fields and replaced it with uh, sync waves for Argo CD. Argo CD, try to do it by yourself from scratch, but uh, do it in the wrong way. It's try to run uh, all the agents first and then try to run jobs. So uh, your agents will not start because database is not ready, for example. But you need to revert to this. Yeah. I see. Thank you. Uh, 
for an Argo CD uh, M chart? Mm, we can try <laughs> if community is interesting. I think uh, it should be. It will be interested. Uh, many actually, people will, will be interested in uh, in it. Uh, I think uh, uh, Argo CD version of uh, what you've, you've showed will be uh, really fine. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And if you have more questions, you can uh, yeah find us. I will show you in real time how it looks like with all of the details, consoles, and so on. If you want, so don't be shy. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.